damage. Anything else you want to say? I'm sure it's good back to you. Yeah, just say I. Okay, just. I. <laughs> Hello and welcome to The Nexus. American politicians have never been older. In fact, you might say they're as old as the hills. The average age in the Senate is now 65. In many countries, that's the age of retirement. Of course, that's nothing compared to these two. Trump and Biden are favorites to run for president next year. They'll be in their 80s by the end of his second term. Biden, of course, is already in his 80s. Age itself isn't the issue. It's more the apparent cognitive decline that in some cases comes with it a problem which some politicians are finding harder and harder to hide. Welcome to Las Vegas. Relax, it's not like you invented it. How many times I gotta say I'm sorry? You... Las Vegas is a movie about old men trying to do things that typically only young men get to do. I'm getting married. What? Uh, wow. To that young lady who's half your age? Hey, wait, wait a minute, she's almost 32. I have a hemorrhoid that's almost 32. And in US politics these days, it's not so much a comedy as real life. Everywhere from the White House to the Senate, politicians are getting older. And unfortunately, in some cases, they're beginning to show their age. This week has been good bipartisan cooperation and a string of uh, increase of 26 billion for the Department of Defense and it funds priorities submitted. Yeah, just say aye. Okay, just aye. Now for most of the last century, the average age in the Senate has hovered between 50 and 60, but right now, the average age is at an all time high, 65 very close to when most Americans would expect to retire. The House of Representatives is a little younger, but still historically old. Despite millennials, that's 27 to 42, making up a fifth of the US population, just around 12% of Congress is from this cohort. Gen Z, so up to 27, has just one representative in the House. Now compare that to boomers who are 46 to 64, well, they make up almost half the house. Down from five years ago, but still showing the outsized influence this group has on American politics. So why is Congress getting older? Well, partly it's because people tend to hold on to their seats for longer. While this could be due to their love of country and desire to serve, some commentators think there's a different underlying motive. In 2012, the Washington Post did a big investigation into this and found that in the lead up to the 2008 meltdown, at least 34 lawmakers from both sides of the aisle changed portions of their portfolios 166 times within two business days of speaking with administration officials. Representatives have been reluctant, to put it mildly, to pass a bill that would ban them from trading stocks while members of Congress. And so we have accusations flying around. For example, Nancy Pelosi's husband has been accused of timing his trades to coincide with legislation that's been passed while his wife Nancy was Speaker of the House. Nancy Pelosi is the perfect example of what should not be happening in D.C., which is people getting rich off the stock market off of information they know because they're a member of Congress. Well, insider trading is against the law. Yeah. How is that not insider trading? Of course, the Pelosi's deny any wrongdoing. Over the course of your career, has your husband ever made a stock purchase or sale based on information you received from you? No. Absolutely not. Many other representatives accused of similar practices have also denied doing anything wrong. There's another whole issue about America's aging politicians. They've been accused of knowing too little about the modern world. Move from here and go over there and sit with my Democrat friends, which will make them real nervous. Does Google track my movement? Have you considered having an online school that people could go to with a Google rep and you could kind of log in and kind of ask questions or have Google and, and not like Comcast where you get put on hold for 30 minutes and then find somebody who you can't understand. If you Google 
the word idiot under images, a picture of Donald Trump comes up. Mr. Chu, does TikTok access the home Wi-Fi network? Only if the user turns on the Wi-Fi. I, I'm sorry, I may not understand that. And it's not just the politicians in Capitol Hill getting older. Look at the White House. Donald Trump broke the age record back in 2017 when he became president at the age of 70. Of course, Trump remained physically and mentally active. He was even able to boast about passing a cognitive test. However, the liberal media, the mainstream media, continued to speculate whether he knew exactly what was going on. And it was 30 or 35 questions. The first questions are very easy. The last questions are much more difficult, uh, like a memory question. It's uh, like you'll go person, woman, man, camera, TV. I hear from psychiatrists on a weekly basis about a different measure of the president, and that's whether he suffers from mental incapacity. That's a very different category, and it goes to whether he can perform his job. Four years later, Trump was beaten by Joe Biden in the race for the White House. His record was shattered by a whole eight years. So Trump was 70. Biden was sworn in at 78. He's worse uh, mentally than he is physically, and physically he's not exactly uh, a triathlete. Someone said, you know, uh, that Biden, he's getting old, man, I tell you what. Well, guess what? Guess what? I can, you know, the only thing that comes today is a little bit of wisdom. Now, while Biden may boast that with age comes wisdom, his critics can point to many, many examples where with age comes physical and mental decline. Well, clearly, US politicians are getting older, and it seems some Americans are worried. Americans were asked if Trump and Biden were too old to serve another term as president, and 77% said Joe Biden was too old. Meanwhile, just 51% of respondents think Trump is too old. Well, that's the dry data, but for a bit of fun, we sent our producer, Salah Hadin out to track down some American voters in London. Trump will be 78 next year at the election, and uh, Biden will be just short of 81. So what do you think about that? You know what, that's all old. Biden is too old to run. You can just tell by looking at him. Yeah. Trump is fine. Uh, so the average age of senators in the US is 65 years old. Do you think that there should be congressional term limits? I believe so. Definitely, especially with uh, Mitch McConnell having a couple of issues last couple of outings, so definitely. So considering there's minimum age limits, do you think it's time that they should put in maximum age limits? I think there should either be maximum age limits or a cognitive test. It's concerning because they make decisions that affect a lot of people and their medical issues are their own, but when their medical issues affect so many other people, I think it's up to public discussion and public judgment. Are Biden and Trump too old to run again for the presidency next year? Uh, yeah, I mean, I give him about two years, give him about, well, he's got a life sentence coming, so yeah. he gonna die, and he's well, t he's way too old. Yeah. Both of them. We know both of these guys are senile. Uh, Reagan had two terms, and the second term, he was already senile. Like, he was almost unable to function as an adult human being. So the fact, you know, we, we just need to cut it off, right? If you're over 70, you don't get, you can't be president. Most people retire at about 65 to 70 years old. How can you say that they're fit to run president, but you can't be, like, yeah. working down at your office job at that age? Like, it doesn't really make much sense. Well, lots to talk about here. Let's bring in our three guests now. And Jay Oshansky is a professor of public health and an expert on aging and longevity at the University of Illinois. We also have John Gizzi, who is a White House correspondent for Newsmax, and Nick Lampson, a former Democratic member of the House of Representatives. Welcome to all of you. Jay Olshansky, I'd like to start with you, since you're the expert on this subject. You say that Trump and Biden are super agers, which is a very, very small percentage of the US population, about 15%. What are super agers? Uh, super agers are a subgroup of the population, about 15%, that are cognitively functioning at a level that is usually decades younger. You have to be 80 years old. Uh, to be uh, classified as a superager, uh, and they go through a whole series of tests to formally determine whether or not you're a superager. These folks tend to live a little bit longer, but more importantly, cognitively, they're functioning decades uh, like people that are decades younger. They're a remarkable 
subgroup of the population, if you're sitting around a table with a bunch of super agers, you close your eyes, you think you're, you're around a bunch of teenagers. They can be CEOs, presidents, whatever they want. And that's what you hear when you listen to uh, Trump and Biden. You hear teenagers just talking together. No, it's actually not listening to them. If you listen to them, you might get a little bit of a different story. No, my colleagues and I actually performed a detailed analysis of their medical records. Uh, and this has in included myself. I'm an uh, expert in survival analysis. My colleagues are geriatricians, board certified. All of us independently verified the medical records of both Biden and Trump. Uh, they all exhibit, they both exhibit the characteristics of super agers. They haven't been formally tested. Uh, that's a that's a bit of a, a you know a different type of analysis. But from what we've seen, we know what super agers look like. We study them for a living. Mm. Both of them are exhibiting signs associated with being a part of this unusual subgroup of the population. There, there's politics, of course, in the United well, States. Well, we'll get to that the in a second. Uh, we'll get to that in a second, Jay. But first of all, cognitively, you know, many decades younger than they really are. Let me take Biden for an example. Um, what makes you when you're when you're observing him? What makes you think that he's a super -ager? Well, first of all, his, from his medical records, his own physician has not performed any additional uh, analyses of his cognitive functioning. If he had, there would be a signal or a sign indicating that he may be suffering from some sort of uh, cognitive decline. Don't I interpret his stuttering for some sort of uh, cognitive dysfunction. He's been stuttering ever since he was a child. Uh, and it's typical for people who don't understand, don't know him to interpret that as a stuttering. He, look, he exercises vigorously, he takes very few medications. He's slim, he's extraordinarily healthy. If you put a microscope on any one of us uh, and you follow us around like these politicians are followed around 24 seven, we all make mistakes, none of us are perfect. That's what you're seeing. They pick up on little imperfections okay. that are occurring on a daily basis in both Biden and Trump and attribute it to aging. It's got nothing to do with aging. My kids who are in their 30s, uh, you know, have difficulty sometimes remembering names or All right. places. Let nothing me, new here. Let me bring in John Gizzi now. I mean, you're the expert on older people, and John Gizzi is certainly an expert on presidents. You've covered every single one of them since what, uh, Carter or Reagan? Yeah, Carter. Okay. Well, tell me about uh, President Biden. Do you think that he shows uh, signs of being a superager with cognitive abilities many decades less than he really is? Based on what I have seen, I would tend to agree with Jay. I remember my father at 60 as I remember Joe Biden at 60 when he was considered one of the finest orators in the Senate and was chairman of the Senate Foreign Relations Committee and before that, the Judiciary Committee. I remember my father at 80 when he had slowed down, but in no way had his cognitive faculties weakened. And Biden is the same way. He's older. He moves a little slower. Now, I will say that my father didn't have Zoom calls with Vladimir Putin or meetings on climate change or inflation or other things that can be very exhausting to anyone of any age. But overall, I would probably agree on, after observing the current president, that he is a super ager. And again, speaking from personal experience, my mother and father made it to their 90s and were driving right up to the end of their days. John and still followed the news, sports, and other things. John, you get to observe him in the flesh in Washington, and uh, we international observers can only watch news clips or little clips on YouTube. And what we, quick, you know, what we quite often see is a man who's, who finishes a speech and then doesn't know which way to get off a stage. He misremem misremembers names. He calls his wife his sister. Uh, he falls over uh, upstairs getting onto Air Force One but you're convinced he's cognitively sharp. I'm saying those are things that could happen to people years younger than Joe Biden. I know um, Wendell Wilkie, the 1940 Republican presidential candidate, was filmed on a, uh, by a newsreel coming off a plane after a trip to the Far East, 
shaking hands with everyone, nice to see you. And he did that with his wife and walked past her. I mean, there are all kinds of stories about this that people make, little malaprops, and uh, I don't see it as a problem. And by the way, I'm in a minority. I don't get into the speculation that Biden will change his mind and not seek re-election. Mm. I think Democrats are committed to him, and he's committed to a re-election. Okay, well, let's take a look at what Democrats want, uh, Nick Lampson. And we just want to refer to a survey that we had in our report earlier. Uh, people were asked, Democrats were asked, is Biden too old to run? And what's really amazing is that 69% of Democrats believe Biden is too old to run. Just 28% of Republicans think no, that Trump is. So that sort of begs the question, Nick, if, if the vast majority of Democrats think that Biden's too old to run, how comes Biden is the favorite to represent the Democrats? I think because he's done a magnificent job as president. Uh, the fact that he has accomplished some great feats of bipartisan legislation, uh, the history that he has had, the, the experience that he's been able to build over literally decades uh, of public service, uh, international involvement, uh, the man's got uh, credentials as long as your arm. And I think that if you consider that and put it into perspective for what is uh, doing, that's the reason why I want to see him continue. You don't think it's uh, I, you don't think, Nick, that it might be because the the talent pool of the Democrats at this moment is rather shallow. I think the talent pool of our country may be a little bit shallow, and the people who are qualified to hold some of these positions are afraid to run because we have so changed our politics. Uh, I will not run again for public office because of the campaigning, not because I don't want to serve. I would love to serve. But I saw in my 10 years in the, in the U.S. House of Representatives the camaraderie within that body deteriorate to the point where, in some instances, members of Congress would call other members' offices to find out when they were flying on airplanes so they could take a different flight, did not want to even talk with them. And that was 15 years ago. Think of what it's like now. I think it's the camaraderie, the failure of us to be able to promote civility and the search for common ground. And if we can get back to that, and I think Joe Biden represents a lot of that, then I think our country is going to grow again and interest uh, in holding public office will increase. Let's take a quick look around the world now to see how Biden at 80 compares to other leaders. We'll just focus on the G7 because they're more comparable. The UK Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, is the youngest at 43. French President Emmanuel Macron, just two years older at 45. Italy's Giorgia Maloney, quite a, a new entrant really, is 46. Canada's Justin Trudeau, still looking very youthful at 51. And German Chancellor Olaf Scholz, well, he's 65. Uh, the oldest after Biden, of course, is Japan's Fumio Kishida at 66. And as for the oldest leader worldwide, well, that title is held by Paul Beer, who's been the leader of Cameroon since 1975 and is still going strong at 90. Anyway, John, let's just turn to the Senate now. We've dealt with the White House. Let's deal with the Senate. You have people like Mitch McConnell and Dianne Feinstein and others. Well, they've really shown signs of cognitive decline. Uh, Feinstein is, is retiring finally at 90. Uh, Mitch McConnell, do you think he's really got to accept his time's up? Well, I think he'll step down as Republican leader of the Senate uh, at the very latest after the 2024 elections. And already there is discussion about maneuvering to succeed him among Senate Republicans. Uh, he has already uh, worked with the Republican legislature in Kentucky on a new law that would require the governor of the state, whatever party he belongs to, to choose a new senator to fill a vacancy from the party of the outgoing senator. So he is prepared for his succession. Now, remember, Mitch McConnell was last reelected in 2020, so he has a few years to go before his term is up. Um, but I do believe he'll step down as leader in right. 2020. 
or. Right. Jake, uh, may I ask you something? When you're observing Mitch McConnell, and it may not be ethical to talk about a particular person, but we, we, can, we can change the question if you like, but when you're observing someone like Mitch McConnell, who is freezing up in front of the camera, you know, in front of the public like that, uh, what might that be down to? Well, so as I was listening to your question, you assumed automatically that he was experiencing cognitive decline. Um, we have lots of armchair gerontologists in the United States who think that they know what cognitive decline looks like. Um, and I'm guessing most people don't actually know what it looks like. We don't know what happened to Mitch McConnell. For all we know, he's suffering from consequences associated with a fall that happened a couple of months ago. He may recover just fine. You have no clue if his cognitive decline is influenced at all by what you saw there. There was, there was clearly something going on, but, but whether it was... Uh, attributable to some age-related mm. disorder is unknown. Um, so it's premature to draw those kinds of conclusions. We have to be careful not to dismiss people just because they may be sick uh, or they may be recovering uh, from a particular health issue. You know, we had mem one member of Congress who was recovering from shingles for a while. You have other individuals that may faint due to dehydration. Look, running for office is not an easy thing to do, especially running for president is not difficult. I dare say the vast majority of the population of the United States would not be able to meet the grueling schedule of any of these politicians. Yes. Whether well, they're... Uh, well, that, that, that brings yeah. us to another question, uh, Nick and uh, John, if you could perhaps help me out with this. Why do people stay on for five, six, seven terms? It, it smacks of uh, sort of greed. It smacks of enjoying the privilege of office a bit too much. John, why don't you come in? Well, certainly I've observed a lot of people who have stayed in office when they could be sitting on corporate boards or writing a book or playing with their grandchildren and uh, or enjoying vacations they never took. John Dingell of Michigan, who served with Nick Lamson, is the longest serving member of the House in history, 60 years, and he succeeded his father and was succeeded by his wife. As he said in his last public statement, the Dingle dynasty will live on, I hope. And he was someone who could do a lot of other things. He was a superb lawyer and prosecutor. He had uh, sat on FDR's desk when he was a page in the House, new presidents of both parties in the spirit of the camaraderie Nick mentions. He genuinely loved public life, and he was especially committed to the cause of health insurance, which his father introduced in 1933. So um, I'd have to believe that someone's good heart is just that, and they believe in public life. And there were others that I covered. I interviewed Senator Strom Thurmond when he sought his last term at 96, was separated from his wife, had lost a daughter in a tragic auto accident. Um, he genuinely loved what he was doing. So it's in all sides that okay. it's a love of public life. Okay, well, Nick, um, John's offering... Well John's off. <laughs> well done, John. Very nice, very nice. But the, the, the cynical <laughs> side of me has to ask, you know, especially after we hear things being said about Pelosi's husband, timing his stock trades, allegedly, uh, with legislation. But look, let's say it's the, the love of public life. Nevertheless, the American public clearly are concerned about their aging politicians, and some would very much like term limits. Uh, Nick, would you agree that term limits are helpful? Uh, not necessarily. Uh, if, if term limits came up under the circumstances uh, of our politics of today, I might consider voting for it. But typically... I believe the best term limit is the ballot box. Uh, if a person, as John just described, loves public service, is doing a decent job, is reaching the middle of the political spectrum and not trying to be an extremist as we have in our government right now, uh, then I don't see any reason why one shouldn't serve multiple terms. Uh, I think there is a time when we need to get out. Uh, I am not disappointed that I lost my election. I am extremely disappointed in how I lost my election. Redistricting in the United States has become a partisan game, and it has split this nation possibly more than almost anything else. 
And until that's fixed, we're not we're going to have a, a, a Congress that is unable to make decisions. And I said it in my book, uh, The Death of Washington's Democracy. George Washington said when he left the White House that if we allow political parties to become stronger than our Congress, the Congress will not be able to make decisions. And we're seeing that today. So I am not one who believes, I, I think that the public needs to make the decision uh, about when a person needs to get out. So the ballot box is the strongest term limit. Nick Lampson, John Gizzi, and Jay Olshansky, thank you all very much for your contributions to The Nexus today. Much appreciated. And thank you at home and on your phones for watching. If you want to see this episode or any of our previous episodes, do go to our channel on YouTube. Just type in Nexus TRT World. Until next week, then, goodbye. <laughs>